I'm Stu Lennox. Uh, we're here today at Advanced Angling Blue Pool in Burfield and we'll talk about solid PVA bag fishing. I've been using solid PVA bags for about 10 years and I've gradually tweaked uh, how I use them and added a few edges. Uh, today uh, I'm using a, uh, a two ounce uh, flat pair lead fish drop off style and I attach this to a fluorocarbon leader of about uh, two foot uh, pinned down with small uh, blobs of putty. Uh, this uh, gives me a bit of um, abrasion resistance but also means I can switch uh, bags uh, very quickly. The rig I use for 95% of my solid bag fishing is this one. It's uh, about three inches of uh, 25 pound sink link tied to a size eight long shank hook. The hook, sh hook bait is normally uh, a trim down uh, eight to 10 mil boilie. Uh, to the end of the hair, I tie a small match hook and enables me to thread a few small maggots onto it that I then pull into the top of the bait. This saves having to mess around with uh, sewing needles, fine braid, etc. The mix I use inside the bag is key. Uh, this is what gives me the, the main attraction around the hook bait. It's made up of three parts. The first part uh, being this here. It's a collection of uh, powders and liquids. The main body of this powder is uh, this C.C. Moore uh, spod mix. This is made up of um, crushed hemp, crushed pellet, um, some small pellet, salt, uh, and other few little bits and pieces. To this, I add some fresh water snails. and importantly, uh, pure bloodworm liquid. The reason for the liquid is it uh, dampens down the powder. If you don't add the liquid, uh, the powders will rise to the surface as soon as the bag melts. The second part of the bag is a mixture of two and three mil pellet. This is mixed very heavily with a salmon fry crumb. The salmon fry crumb is one of the key elements of this bag. If you're fishing over gravel, uh, the small particles get into the gravel keeps the fish constantly rooting around. They can smell it, it's triggering their senses, um, but there's no food items left in the swim and they'll continue to visit that swim and look for uh, your bait. It also works over silt. Again, if the uh, small items get cleared away by small fish, silver fish, etc., the sort of essence of the powder gets into the silt, constantly keeps triggering the, the carp sensory organs and they'll uh, continue to hunt around in that area, hopefully finding your hook bait. Finally, I've got maggots on the hook and therefore a fish, a small pinch of red maggots inside the bag. Again, this adds a, an active, uh, natural, live element to the vicinity of the hook bait and attracts fish of all types in. So the first stage of the bag is I use a, uh, a bulk, uh, plain, unperforated uh, PVA bag. The first step is uh, slightly different to um, what most people do with their solid bag and I cut approximately halfway down the bag. This gives me two uh, sort of loose flaps that I'll use later on for tying off the bag. Next, I add approximately uh, about an inch or a good handful of the uh, powder and the uh, bloodworm liquid. And a handful of the small pellet. <clears throat> this uh, soft powder in the bottom uh, serves several functions. One, it protects the hook point. When that's pulled into the bag, there's no chance of it hooking a small pellet or a maggot. Also, that powder is carrying all the, the main attractors uh, from the bag mix, the liquid, the snails, etc. So I want to be that in the end nearest to the hook. Finally, it makes the bag malleable and it makes it easier to fold the corners in uh, later on in the process. Again, this is slightly different. I use a, a long needle and I pull the hook length back into the bag. Uh, like you would do in a uh, PVA uh, mesh stick. Now be careful when doing this to make sure the hook point doesn't hook into the seam or a fold in the PVA bag. I then attach the lead uh, using a uh, mini clip, a mini ring clip. This uh, means I can change rigs quickly, um, but also makes this process possible. The lead goes into the bag and just sits off to one side at this stage. Next, add a pinch full of maggots. And again, sit the lead on top. As mentioned, you can see here, there's a good buffer of the ground bait and the pellet before the maggots. There's no chance of them fouling the hook point. 
Finally, another handful of the small pellet and then fix the lead, centerize the lead in the middle of the bag. The reason I finish off with pellet, it's a lot easier to tie the bag off against the pellet than against the soft maggot. At this stage here, I tie two simple overhand knots. Again, this is diff different to how you may normally fish solid PVA bags where you tie it off with tape. There are several reasons for this, and this will be covered later. After you tie the first overhand knot, start to work the corners using the palms of your hands to compress the bag, settle the pellet, get the pellet in amongst the maggot, etc., and just tighten that bag down, make it nice and uh, robust, ready for casting. Tie the second knot off as tight as you can. And then as mentioned before, lick and stick the corners in, constantly working the bag to make it as tight as possible to make uh, casting as easy as possible. At this stage here, the bag's starting to take shape. Cut off the tag ends, but don't throw them away. Keep one and tie off a small, sorry, cut off a small uh, element. And we use this uh, to stick over the, uh, the hook point at the base. This keeps the hair aligned along the shank of the hook, uh, protects the hook bait and uh, stops the hair from uh, tangling or wrapping around that exposed hook. At this stage here, your bag is tied and ready to cast out, and we'll see how it acts now in the tank. It's worth mentioning at this point, I don't pierce the bag or use perforated bags. This is nice and compact and will fall through the water uh, fast enough as it is. If you start piercing the bag, uh, you run the risk of uh, it melting prematurely and spreading bait around the swim rather than landing and dissolving in a small pile. We'll drop this into the tank now and see how it performs. You'll see now the key reason I tie the, uh, the bag off on itself rather than the lead. As the bag dissolves, it'll fill with air and it will uh, partially dissolve. The bag will then lift up to the surface and continue to dissolve at the top. Rather than when it's tied directly to the bag, everything is fixed uh, against the bag and can't, you're not fishing until the whole thing is dissolved and moved. You see here, it's already started to dissolve quickly. Uh, the, uh, the ground bait is falling over the, uh, the hook and the pellet is covering uh, the lead. With this setup, you get almost uh, complete uh, rig concealment. Uh, you can see here the bag's already started to melt, part of it's broken away, and very shortly uh, the, the final knot will dissolve and the bag will float up to the surface. Uh, the hook bait is uh, clearly uh, on show and is already fishing. Uh, it's very obvious and is down, like I say, the business end that's packed with all those, uh, those stimulators. The maggots are very active again and they'll attract all, uh, all species of fish which then in turn uh, will attract the carp. The uh, ground bait mix, uh, as you again you can see, uh, is very active. Uh, the oils and the small particles travel up and down the water column, uh, again uh, attracting fish from all around. And what you can't see is the, uh, the sort of the smell and the aura of the bloodworm liquid is also uh, starting to creep out of the end mix. It's the final last elements of the uh, PVA bag are now uh, lifting to the surface. It's almost completely uh, residue free. And nine times out of 10, uh, when fishing this method, uh, the hook bait is the, the first to go. I've watched carp in the edge approach the bag. It's uh, an attractive, active uh, hook bait sat on the end of the attractors, and that is the first uh, piece to go. Uh, I've used this bag on this session. I've already had uh, two fish so far. Uh, I've also used it uh, all over the country. Uh, some people think it's a small fish tactic. I've had fish to just short of 40 pounds on this. It works for me, it catches me a lot of fish. If you give it a go, it should work for you too.